Oh baby, I am so glad I saved this for where in the video it is. What's up guys, it's Alec Mac 111 Merry Christmas, I have missed you guys. Remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. Without his birth, life, death, and resurrection, this awesome holiday would not be possible. I seriously have missed you guys so much. Remember when I said big things were coming? Well, I may or may not have moved to Texas, 25 hours away from where I was currently living in Indiana. I've been here for four months, started a new job, built a new YouTube studio, and I'm about to give you guys the biggest airsoft unboxing that I have ever done in my life. I have more polar stars in this video, more high kappas in this video, more rare guns in this video, and the most money that I've ever unboxed. I'm gonna try and fit this into one video. We're gonna see how that goes. But if you could just real quick, since you boys back and YouTube's been all freaky since I've been gone, could you guys just smash the like button for me real quick? I can't even see dislikes anymore. Apparently people on YouTube got too soft, so you can't even see dislikes now or the amount of dislikes. So if you leave a dislike on my video, you're a big meanie, but if you leave a like, I will come to your house and personally give you a high five, every single one of you. So be ready, be ready. I wonder if that's even allowed anymore. Are high fives frowned upon in the world we live in? Cause I'm, I'm really confused and I just don't know anymore. Let's get some of this stuff cleared out so I can actually see you guys and you can see my brand new YouTube studio. Hey, okay, there we go. Now that I've officially slapped a box, we can get back to the video. I'm sorry guys, I, I just forgot. It's been a long time, I'm out of practice. I'm sorry, lo siento. Up first, we have a Tokyo Marui MK23 soak gun. For those of you that do not know, this gun is actually super old. I have felt one before on the field. This guy that I used to play with in Ohio was a sniper and he used one, but I have never Never actually owned one and man this thing is beautiful I have owned I think two of the full frame USPs from uh, KWA but I've never owned one of the Tokyo Marie's ones and these ones actually come stock with a suppressor dude look how cool that looks also check out the pixels I'm gonna zoom in real quick this new camera I know my other one was pretty nice but you guys are about to get some quality if you guys have not seen or heard one of these shoot before, these are the quietest airsoft pistols ever. This is actually a non-blowback. So that's all that happens right there. That we hear, it does that. And these things shoots about like, it's like a little bit under 300 feet per second, I think. But the hop up on these Tokyo Marie's, if you guys have never had a Tokyo Marie, are absolutely insane. These guns can shoot like 150, 170 feet for a pistol. It, you can kind of see it. You can honestly probably catch the BB out at a certain distance, but you can't hear it. So if you can't hear it, you're going to probably have problems with hit calling. But man, the guy I bought these from also threw in some patches and stickers too, which is pretty cool. This is like one of the STAC Kiwi pouches, I think. I actually got some of those for my real belt rig that I'm building and then threw in, I think this is like an LBX line. I'll show a close up on these. I don't know about you guys, but this reminds me of the splinter cell gun, just with a long suppressor. You got a little light on here too that's like 150 lumens if you want to. I don't even have batteries in it, obviously, because I just got it. This is an old school Tokyo Marie, so it actually had the HK trades on it. However, they've been scratched out. I don't know if that was when it was imported that they just removed it or the guy that I bought it from. But super, super excited to have this rare collector piece in my collection. Hey, since we're on the pistol trend, might as well do another pistol that I got off of eBay while we're at it. This is a Tokyo Marui 5.1 High Kappa. You guys know I love High Kappas. This one is actually the primary airsoft adapter. When I bought this from this guy, he said he was including it. And these are pretty expensive. I have heard that these these are the best adapters out there. The tap ones don't work necessarily with every gun, but I've heard that the primary arms ones are awesome. I have never used one. I got to use my friend David's uh, tap airsoft when we tried it. It does feel like the fitment is honestly better in this one. This one is the TM mag. I think the other one we were using was WE, so that's also probably a part of it. This infinity slide on here is super cool. I don't know if this is a retro 5.1 infinity slide, but man, I really like that. It's got a gold barrel as well. I got an upgraded hop up. You guys know that when I get high cappas, I really don't ever leave anything stock. Um, and when I prefer to buy ones like this, they have upgrades in them. So it's got some short stroke buffers in there. I believe this is the AM hop up chamber. I'm not sure if the bar the gold barrel is aluminum or steel. It feels like it's a lighter aluminum. I think this one might be one of the lighter aluminum airsoft masterpiece ones, but I'm not super familiar with the aluminum ones. You can feel the difference when you pick up one that has an aluminum barrel versus a steel barrel though, because they are completely, completely different weight wise. I'll show you guys a close up on the slide here real quick, but it's really, really cool. It's like a, almost like a Tron style slide of the infinity, but it looks so, so, so good. Hopefully you guys can see that. Like I said, new camera, new pixels, everything is beautiful. And this primary arms magazine is 
very, very high quality. Feels, feels really, really solid. Springs have obviously been upgraded on this as well. You can definitely feel that. Looks like it is the stock nozzle and then the sights are stock too. I think he's just painted a white sight on the front of there, which is always nice to put those little white dots at the front of it and then the back is standard, but beautiful second pistol in the unboxing. Up next, we have another box of some sort. I'm actually not 100%, ooh, that's some dust. That is some crusty dust. All right, up next, we have a Lancer Tactical Gen 2 box that is super, super dusty. You need to be trying to get an education because your looks ain't gonna get you paid because you're not that cute and your hair is uneven. You look dusty. Wow, that was almost as dusty as, ooh. Ah, I love Polar Stars. And what is inside this gun? None other than the first Polar Star of the video. This is a newer version of the Lancer Tactical. This is actually one of the full metal ones. When I bought it on eBay, I saw it. I did not realize that this one was the metal body one, but this is really, really nice. I love the little purple accents on them. I'm not exactly sure what this is called, but it does have the M-Lock rail system. Really interesting there, the kind of low profile you have there, and then the, it gets a little bit thicker right there. And then it's got kind of like the skeletonized F1 style upper as well as a lower, obviously in airsoft, it doesn't matter that much anyway, especially once you throw an HPA engine, the gun is going to be super light, but this is super light. So if you're a speed softer, this is your dream. I love the little purple accents. I don't know if that's something that's stock or got painted on. It looks like it's something that's stock on there. I don't think so. The paint is chipping a little bit on the charging handle, probably from the guy going full operator mode. FBI, open up! and blasting a ton of people indoors. It does have a Polar Star F2 engine in here. It looks like it's running the stock hop up, but I believe it's an upgraded barrel as well. I don't know why he left this orange tip on. That is ugly. Don't worry, we'll remove that later. The flat trigger on this is really nice too. It's like a, like a little flat trigger, but at the bottom, it's kind of got a little hook of some sort. I do like that. And then obviously your amped braided line. This is a nice one. I've actually never seen this color IGL, I don't know if this is new, but it's like a blue and navy. The colors should pick up really well on this camera, so I'm excited for you guys to kind of be able to see that because this gun is gorgeous. I'm actually not super familiar with the F2 engine, so I'm kind of excited to play with this and kind of test it out a little bit. I know it's got mixed reviews. Some people really like it. Some people don't like it that much. The Fusion engines are always going to be the best in terms of performance, but the F2 is a pretty solid engine. Anything Polar Star make is gonna be good. Alrighty, big box number two. Dude, once again, some of you guys are way too good at packaging these things. Good job. <sighs> All right, now that I've gotten through 8,000 layers of stuff here, we have Polar Star number two. Wow, this thing is beautiful. This is a KWA KM4 RS. This is like the new basic metal um, KWA line. I believe this has an F1 in it? Yep, this is a Polar Star F1 engine in here. It's pretty simple on the outside, except for this super cool EOTech Repro on the top. Looks like some sort of EOTech Repro. It actually does turn on. Got your good old red and green. I don't know how I feel about the red on the all black. You guys can let me know what you think about that. It does have one of the MFT stocks on here. These things are super, super nice. This is like the, the Battle Link stock. This is the bigger one that you can kind of put your uh, FCU in here. These are awesome for Polar Stars if you guys have not used them because you can run your FCU LiPo battery in the back here and kind of flip it around and just store a bigger battery in here just in case you kind of are one of those people that leaves your battery plugged in and then your mini FCU LiPo dies. Not that I've ever done that before, but I've definitely murdered like five FCU batteries <laughs> just from leaving them in after playing or whatever. But man, we have started out with some absolute heat at the beginning of this video. This thing is beautiful. I love these M4s. These are kind of like the basic M4s. This kind of like 16 inch is really, really nice. Um, I love the rail system on these KWAs. They are really high quality. They work awesome. They kind of fit all the accessories that you want on there while at the same time being pretty low profile and minimal. This is like what I feel like my dad would use when he plays Airsoft. Just that like basic M4. Not too flashy, but maybe put a black EOTech on there and something like that. And then he's just hiding through the bushes, slowly moving in. This is like your dad's airsoft gun. So if your dad does not have a Polar Star, maybe you can buy this one for him for Christmas. All right, now that we started with the heat, let us continue with some more heat. This one feels like it's gonna be a little bit easier to get into, hopefully. 
All right, well, this thing is not wanting to go together. All right, guys, it's not perfect, but it is together. And this is a beautiful GMP slash VFC Polar Star Fusion engine. The problem is, I remember him explaining this to me. He had a GMP lower, but he took the GMP lower off and put it in a VFC lower. However, he did not understand that VFC lowers and GMP uppers are not compatible. They do not work together, so don't try and do that. But it does have a beautiful Daniel Defense rail system on here for those of you that love your little Mark 18 style rail systems. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful tan. Um, and then you got your Magpul PTS grip here. And then I think this is like all the guys he played with. He's got like his whole, uh, his whole team on there. It's pretty cool. There seems like quite a few guys. And then he included that GMP lower, like I said, as well has his old tank, which does not need hydro, but it is close to needing hydro. And then the old school stretchy. If you've ever seen the old dudes at the fields that run this, they probably took it from their paintball gun and managed to just throw it over to airsoft because these bad boys are retro. Hey, remember when I told you guys I was gonna hit you with nonstop heat? Well, I don't know if you've seen the first few guns in this video, but uh, yeah, we're three Polar Stars in, as well as two really nice pistols, and we might be adding another one here real quick. This is the rarest airsoft pistol I have had in a long, long time. Probably if you guys remember that Desert Eagle that I had, that Tokumari Desert Eagle, the really cool biohazard one, this is a super old school, actually trademarked Smith & Wesson Tanaka M500. And this is the Midnight Black version. <coughs> oh my gosh. Dude, look at how big that is. That's bigger than my head. Yo, this is so cool. I don't think I've ever, I've owned a few revolvers in the day, but I don't think I've ever owned one of the Tanaka ones. Wow, this grip feels amazing. It's got the whole Smith & Wesson trades on there as well. I'll be showing you guys some close-ups. It's almost got like the little almost compensator up here. I mean, this is gonna be something like a 500 Magnum, 44 Magnum, that big round. So when you shoot this thing, I've actually never shot a caliber that big. I think the biggest pistol caliber I've ever shot is a 45, which is nothing special. But man, look at the finish on this thing too. This is used, so it is a little bit older. You can see some dust on it but that grip feels really, really nice. And if you do not know these Tanakas, they are not metal. They're like a really high quality polymer. So you're supposed to use like duster gas or green gas instead of propane just to keep these things lasting well and not hurt them at all. Wow. So what you do with this, it looks like you load the BBs in the front. These are six millimeter, not eight millimeter. They actually do have some revolvers that are eight millimeter. I used to have a Derringer back in the day. I forget what brand it was, but it was an eight millimeter Derringer. And Jared and I both had one and they were super cool. But it looks like you put the BBs in the front and then you kind of leave it back here and there's like a hole. And so it'll shoot each one of them. I don't think you actually move them. I think you just have to line them up with that hole. No, it looks like the cylinder does revolve. So it must somehow just load the gas in there at some point and then move from there. Yeah, you can see there's the gas in one of the slots here. There's gas that you load it in, but it does move and it revolves. But the, the cylinder not only holds the BBs, but also holds the gas. I know a lot of pistols will have it here. That's really cool. I cannot wait to shoot this thing. This thing is going to be absolutely beautiful. Just check that out. Just admire. Mm. Yeah, that's definitely the coolest airsoft pistol maybe I've ever unboxed. Seriously. That is absolutely beautiful. The finish is a little bit weird because it's plastic, but it's made to look like metal. So it's a little bit weird. Tanaka stuff does feel a little bit flimsy, kind of like Tokyo Marui, man, but the quality and the performance on these things is unmatched. Imagine some dude pulls up on you like this. What up, partner? Welcome to my parts of the town. You get hit with one of these rounds, dude, you are off of God's green earth faster than about anything in the history of the world. I'm going to be honest, I feel bad for whatever gun's next because I don't know if anything's going to be able to keep up with that beautiful Tanaka M500. Alrighty, up next we have an ugly, crappy Echo 1 gun bag, but hopefully whatever in here is not nearly as ugly as the bag. I'm just kidding, Echo 1 bags are fine. Yep, oh, nope, not ugly at all. Mm -mm. Up next in the Christmas unboxing, we have a D-Boys Polar Star Scar, I don't think I've pulled anything out of here that has not been gas powered or HPA powered. No, we haven't got there yet. Another gun that I found on eBay, I think I bought this like two months ago, I can't exactly remember, but this does have a Polar Star engine in it. This one is a Jack, I do believe. I'm pretty sure it's a Jack. Yep, we got a Jack engine in there. It does have an upgraded bucking. 
as well as a barrel that actually goes all the way through the suppressor. This is one of those AAC repro suppressors of some sort. I love these because you can kind of run the suppressor if you want and then very quickly switch out your flash hider if you just want to use the flash hider. Some people do it for sound. This one is not foam filled, so it's going to be just as loud regardless. But some of these, just the fact that you can screw them on so quickly, obviously in real world situation, that's kind of important. But for airsoft, it just looks cool if you want to like, okay, I'm going to go into my city now. So I'm going to take my suppressor off and get an extra two minus inches because inches matter. <sighs> Bravo six going loud. Pew, 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 pew. Just kidding. Anyway, I do love these flash hiders. I think they look great. You can see that beautiful little silver barrel in there as well. He does have some sort of fake AFG here. Once you see enough fake of these, you can just tell them from a mile away because the quality is not nearly as good as the real Magpul ones. However, I do like these AFG twos. These have really great grips. I actually have one of them on my real 10.5 AR. And then the externals are okay. D-Boy's scars are meh. The only really solid external scars are the VFCs. But the Scar is just such a cool gun, man. I absolutely love it. The grips on these a lot of times are really wobbly, but this one actually feels pretty good. It does have a little body wobble and whatnot, but the fact that these whole back stocks are just so hard because you have the wires in there too, so then you access it. But this thing is absolutely beautiful. It looks like it's in pretty good shape too. And he did include a tank as well as a line. Yes, he did include his air setup. This is really nice. These are one of the Polar Star like MR small regulators. They're actually really nice. And this is the same like the Polar Star braided line. And then a pretty cheap standard metal Ninja tank that also will need hydro in eh, about two years. So it's got a little bit of life left on it. Alrighty, up next we have a smaller box. I'm actually not 100% sure what's in this, but at this rate, it's probably another Polar Star. Um, hello, back-to-back -back scars. Speaking of very, very nice and the best brand of scar, we have a VFC Scar H. Wow, this thing is absolutely beautiful. I'm not sure what engine is in this. Oh yeah, this is my first Kythera. I forgot about buying this because I bought this like two and a half months ago. This is one of the Polar Star Kytheras. That is so light, man. Wow. I don't know if that's just the Polar Star bot or the VFC body as well as the Kythera engine. But man, that's got to be the lightest scar I've ever felt. I don't know what is going on up here. I don't know what he did. Maybe he was making his scar look the most battlefield possible. But this is a weird little flash hider barrel. This looks like my dad's real AR with the Clinton band. For those of you that are old enough to kind of know about that. Bolt catch works like a charm. I love the gold. It's like the gold kind of champagne color on the Kythera engines. They look cool. I've never used one of these, like I said, so I'm kind of excited to test it out. Looks beautiful. I love these scars that have this little plate on the bottom. Uh, the scar mags, I think they look super, super good. Whoever used this was O2. Actually, I like that pink a lot too. <laughs> you can tell pink's a pretty cool color. Wow, that thing is beautiful. I seriously cannot get over how light these are. Let's compare the body of this to the other one. You can just tell, I don't, now that I have a ton of pixels on that camera, you guys can probably tell from here, just the quality of the body of the real VFC license scar that's got the actual FN Herschel licensing as opposed to like the D-Boys or the Echo One baseline scars. It's just a world of difference. You can definitely tell the build quality and what VFC put into these as opposed to these. Not that these aren't bad and they're a good option if you want, but I would spend a little bit more money and buy a VFC because it's going to last you way longer. And the internals on this, before you HPA it, obviously, HPA is going to beat everything. But the internals on this are way better than the stock or cheaper scars. All right, boys, might as well continue with the nonstop heat with yet another HPA gun. Y'all can't make this up. Like I said absolute heat this entire video if you've not smashed the like button yet absolutely do it uh this is like the fifth polar star in the video charging handle good thing we have editing software so i can edit that out this is like the sixth polar star i've unboxed in this video wow this thing is absolutely gorgeous this is one of the older school i think this is like the a4 version of the vfc 416 i think is what it's considered it does have a polar star fusion engine in there which is absolutely amazing it's got the stark arms vertical grip i actually really like these it's like a vertical angled kind of like hybrid 45 degree grip they actually feel really nice the rubberized texture on them is really really solid i have not used one of them long term enough or shot one of the real guns with them but airsoft wise they just feel really comfy i just like a little bit more aggressive angle when i grip my guns but the fusion engine hinge here you got the actually older version of the pro win too this gun is pretty old you can tell it's got the same like older 
version of the speed trigger as well. Definitely looks like whoever I bought this from was loving it. You got the older style stock as well. Looks like he's got his FCU stuff in there. I have it pulled out a little bit, so I don't want to pull out any of the wires. But yeah, just a normal FCU in there. Does not have a battery. However, it does look like the wires for a gun being older are actually in pretty good shape. Because some of you guys, when you rip your FCUs out, man, you tear those wires apart and those wire harnesses get absolutely abused. The only thing I do not like on these guns is this stupid little knob here, man. I, I hate these. I will get these. I remember the 417 that I used for a little bit. I dremeled that off so quickly just because it feels weird. I mean, it might work for some people's hands and it feels fine. But I just hate having that little knob there. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful gun though, man. This thing is gorgeous. And another Polar Star added to the collection. Up next, we have yet another Polar Star. This one is a G&G &G combat machine. This is like the little bit higher end one. Man, this thing feels super, super light too. I don't know if it's just been because I've been holding more real guns, but man, this thing is so, so, so light. It's like nothing to it. I know it has a jack engine in it as well as a Pro Win hop up. But man, this just feels super, super light. I actually really like how this guy has his front set up. He's got one of the K-Tech amplifiers on it, and I'm actually not sure which grip this is. I think this is like one of the Fortis grips. Don't hold me to it. And then these are the nicer combat machine bodies. These are actually really solid. They're a lot higher quality, so if you drop them and hurt them and damage them, um, they're gonna hold up a little bit nicer than the stock combat machine bodies. And then he's running some sort of little zip tie setup on here with a flashlight that maybe is 300 lumens. But it's pretty cool. He's got it really tight to the gun. Oh, it's a Surefire. What? No, this is not a real Surefire. There's no way that's a real Surefire. That is so dim. The light quality looks like it's pretty good, even if it's kind of dim. Maybe it is a real Surefire. Who knows? This has got the Tango Down style grip on it, as well as the Speed Trigger, upgraded barrel, bucking, hop up, man. Beautiful, beautiful gun. I do think it's funny how some of these people will have all black guns, a little bit of blue, a little bit of tan. You can tell with my real one that I do a little bit of color swapping on it too. And no, that is not the six millimeter. Up next, we have a gun that looks like it was not loved that well or just needs kind of re-put in there. It does look like this broke. I'm not sure if that happened during shipping or that was before. But otherwise, this is a really nice Crytek. This is the Gen 1 of the Crytex. It looks like it has been upgraded, obviously. I think this is a Fusion engine as well. Oh yeah, yeah it is. Mm, that is a beautiful gun. I'm not sure what happened to the back of this though. I will get that fixed, obviously. You got your FCU and stuff in there. I do not want to pull on the wire harness. It'd be really bad if I told you guys to not pull on the wire harness and then I went and did the same thing. But alas, it is fine. It looks like it's doing well in there. Does have the MFT grip on here. This is really interesting. I love these grips. Um, it has, they have like a weird little texture pattern and I like these kind of grooves on the front as long as they're not super pronounced. I don't know what it is. Everybody has different preferences with grips and that's just how I feel. You have a real AFG2 up on the front here. I actually really like how this is set up with having that little suppressor through the rail system. I think this is like a little GMP special operations company suppressor these ones are the really tiny ones but that actually looks really good in that rail system i love suppressors that are kind of threaded through the rail systems i think they look really good this is a utg site on here i actually have no idea it says scp and a bunch of numbers and letters i have never seen this red dot before i don't know if it's a new one or what it is oh wow the reticle is super cool switch to red switch to green that's beautiful it's like a eotech reticle of some sort but it looks really, really good. And it's really clear as well. Huh, it's like a circle with the dot in the middle. I'll try and show that on video if I can. Like I do with many of my guns, I will get them up and running and looking pretty. It looks like it's in pretty good external condition except for this that broke. And then it looks like the front body pin has kind of been abused a little bit, but a cool gun nonetheless. He did include a beautiful tank line and reg. I'm not sure what he's doing with his LPR here. This is a really interesting angle, but does have a nice carbon fiber tank that actually does need rehydroed. But these carbon fiber uh, 40 or 90 by 4500s are very, very nice. And then he's got some sort of old braided line. I think this is one of the red line braided lines, not 100% sure but it does look like one of those older ones. Beautiful air setup. Time to mix it up a little bit with something maybe a little bit smaller. We've got a lot of rifles back to back, so it's time to dig into a smaller gun. And here it is, another high kappa in the video. Wow, 
This thing is cool. This is another one that I managed to see on eBay and I was like, man, that thing is super, super cool. I'm definitely gonna be looking out for that. I don't know what slide this is or what barrel this is, but this is gorgeous. It's got some sort of carbon fiber style mount with red dot here as well. The red dot does look like it's kind of beat up a little bit. I don't know if that's been cracked or it looks like it's almost been heat. It says tack fire. Huh, that's interesting. Absolutely looks beautiful with the extended magazine as well. It looks like it does have an upgraded nozzle of some sort. It looks like it's the stock hop chamber, upgraded bucking, upgrading, upgraded barrel. I would hope they upgraded the barrel if they're gonna put all the rest of this on here because upgrading a barrel for the high cap, if you guys don't know, is one of the quickest upgrades you can do. I love this trigger on this thing. I don't know what brand this trigger is, but that looks super, super cool. Nice upgraded springs as well. Upgraded mag well. This one is a limb cap mag well. Huh, that's really nice. I wonder if the slide is a limb cap slide too. It does look like one of the Airsoft Masterpiece slides. I forget which one this one's called. If you guys know, comment in the description. But the, with the fluted barrel and the little ports on the slide, I think that looks gorgeous. And then if you want, you can run some sort of suppressor on here. Ooh. Ah, dang, this is a little bit different threads. It must be stock for the MK23, but imagine that, dude, that looks cool. Super, super cool. I don't know about you guys, but I think high cabs are super, super beautiful. I know a lot of people are using them. A lot of the Speedsoft guys have them. I actually have a custom Alec Mac 111 high Kappa in the works from LA Kappa Customs, working on a sponsorship slash partnership with him over there. So I'm super excited for you guys to see that video because he has made a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pistol. It's gonna be something that's pretty cool. Also might be something that I'm giving away once we hit 100,000 subscribers. We'll see, maybe. Up next might be the only piece of gear actually that I have in this entire unboxing, maybe. These are the T-Rex Arms chest rigs. For those of you that don't know, T-Rex Arms is a real steel company. Um, Lucas is a Christian, super awesome guy. And they make some super, super cool chest rigs. So I've actually seen a bunch of videos on these, but they've been sold out for a long time. So once they came back in stock, I did buy a Coyote Brown one and then a Ranger Green one. And man, this thing is super, super low profile. It's really cool how it kind of sticks to your midsection and runs it. I'll probably have some videos of me shooting my real guns with this at some point. You got three on the front here. You have two on the sides here. Oh, it's actually two on the sides here. So you can run a total of like seven and then it looks like you have a little flashlight pouch on each side too. And then if you want to run something like an IFAC on the back, you can. Super, super cool for as little real estate as they are. And their price wasn't super bad. For those of you that have been saying that you wanted long videos, you are absolutely getting one because I still have a ton left to unbox. Up next, we have the first sub of the video. This is a G&G &G ARP9. These are actually super, super cool. I've unboxed quite a few of them now recently. And this one has a Polar Star Fusion engine in it, I believe. I actually did not know that these could have the Fusion engines, but you see that black right there? That is the sign of a beautiful, beautiful fusion engine. I guess it would make sense that you can run a fusion engine in here because it does work mostly on version two components. I don't know if you have to have a different nozzle or anything, but it does have a G and G tracer suppressor thing up here. I think this is one of those tracer mods that you kind of open up and it has a tracer inside of it. It's got like the alligator on there that looks super cool. The stocks on these, they have a few different versions of the ARP9. I don't know exactly the model numbers or whatever, but these are really cool and they're super, super lightweight as well as kind of low profile for those of you guys that are CQB guys. It's got the uh, fake Embus Repros on here as well. These are like the Embus Pros is what it looks like. I don't know if these are G&G &G or if they're another brand, but they look really, really cool and feel kind of good. I don't like how short the back stock on these are. I feel like, um, I feel like the length is good. But when you're trying to cheek it or put it on your shoulder and kind of put your cheek on it, I feel like it should extend a little bit longer. I know some of them do, but maybe this works well for those of you guys that are short kings out there that are running your guns really tight and are like four foot nine. So that's for you. You go for it, bro. Up next, we have the sleekest of all the high kappas in this unboxing. This one is some sort of beautiful black DVC high kappa 5.1. Oh man, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that, dude. These STI DVC slides are probably my favorite high cap of slides. They look so, so good. The finish on them is absolutely incredible. 
man, these things are just absolutely cool. Now that I live in the state of Texas, I can extra appreciate that a little XTI um, surrounded by the Texas state right there. That is absolutely beautiful. It doesn't look like this gun is upgraded a ton other than like the slide and the steel barrel that's on here. It does have a nice magwell. Looks like we got a stock hop-up stock barrel from what I can tell. It looks like it's stock on all those parts except for the mag one, the bottom two. This is one of the Infinity Magwells. These are really nice. He did include a bunch of TM magazines, which is always nice. These TM magazines are beautiful. It looks like it's got a 3D printed base on there. Looks like it's on all of them. Huh, I've never seen these before. Looks like it's almost an extended little base of some sort. It does feel nice. It's kind of rubberized for those quicker reloads if you're working on that super cool ISCP operator tactical feels. I really want to get one of these in real life eventually. The only problem is they're like $4,500. But this is a beautiful, beautiful airsoft version. Really snappy as well. As soon as I pull that slide back, the nozzle ret retracts quickly. It looks like the fitment in this thing is absolutely perfect. Time to rip into another thick boy with a smaller gun inside. Maybe, oh, this dude included his helmet setup in here as well. But once again, another Polar Star. This one is one of the old school GMPs. I absolutely love these GMP guns. If you guys don't know, GMP or Crytax probably my favorite brand. GMP is my favorite OG brand, just because it's like one of the guns I grew up with. When I was like 14, I bought a really nice GMP Magpul MOE Carbine, and they just have some really high quality stuff. Unfortunately, they didn't step up their quality a ton. They've done a little bit here and there, but it's kind of remained the same, which I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it because GMP stuff is nice, but there's stuff like the Crytax and the VFC Avalons that are absolutely blowing these out of the water. However, for the price point, if you can't afford one of those higher end guns, I would definitely get a GMP. It is a really good lower high end gun. And for the price, it's pretty unbeatable, especially if you want to throw in a fusion engine like this guy has, man, this thing is probably shooting absolute laser beams. The stock GMP hop-up and barrel combos are actually pretty good. Um, looks like that's what he's running. But if you put a $500 engine in a gun, that's one of the things I don't understand. This dude just threw a $500 engine in a gun and left everything else stock, which is fine if that's what you want to do. But at least upgrade like the bucking or the barrel or something. And maybe this thing ap shoots absolutely laser beams. I'm, I'm sure it does. But if you had a pro win or like a max hop-up unit with a nicer bucking and added like an extra 150 bucks, you're going to get a lot more usage out of your guns. So tips with Alec Mac. Like I said, he did include his helmet as well. I'm actually not sure what helmet this is, but this is really, really nice. It's got some really cool little MVG thing on the front there. Going so hard, the battery on my camera died and I had to replace it. Anyway, super nice helmet. And it looks like he's running the old school, same thing, those red line SFR uh, regulators. These are really, really nice. They're a little bit older now, but they still are one of the best regulators in the game. And he's got a nice little red line. Uh, line too. This is the one that came with the other one. I'm pretty sure they're identical. And speaking of those super nice VFC guns that have kind of made the GMPs a little bit outdated, we have an Avalon. I have unboxed quite a few of these recently, but man, this thing is absolutely beautiful. It's got the M-Lock rail system on here. I love whatever amplifier thing he's put on this. This does not look like it's stock. It also looks like it's spray painted, maybe started out as like a chrome but man, that fits in there perfectly. Maybe that is something that's stock. This is the newer one. Same thing, these dudes that are running $20 Valken red dots on a little bit of a riser, and they have an engine in here that's a jack that costs mm, $350, and a gun that costs mm, $450, $20 red dot. Buy one of Alec Mac 1 and 1's red dot on Hop Up or my website that I'm gonna work on below for like 50, 60, 70, and you're gonna have something that is gonna work way better than this thing and gonna last way longer too. I've had so many of these Valken ones that I've gotten in unboxings and they are broke and they just don't work and then they have a lost screw or a strip screw or something. Anyway, I'm gonna hop off my soapbox for a second and I'm just gonna enjoy the gun. The finish on these VFCs is very, very, very nice. They feel so good. I love the little ergonomics. They have really cool little flat lightning, almost like a lightning bolt trigger. They have awesome uh, controls. If you wanna manipulate them, they have really nice like selector switches. The grips feel amazing. The stocks are really cool. I don't like how wobbly these are. That's the only thing with the VFC QRS stocks that I don't love. Even stock, they wobble quite a bit, but they are very nice and do, do have a lot of space in here if you wanna store stuff and kinda of put your FCU um, for all of you that use Polar Stars, AKA it's pretty much all I buy because I love them. He did include a bunch of hex mags as well. Looks like we got five here. Um, I think these are the older gens. I know the newer gens have a little bit different feeding lip, um, but these older gens are pretty mediocre. This one looks like it's a newer gen. So some of them are the older gens 
Yeah, it looks like one is the newer gen. This probably came with the gun, and then four are the older ones. And these also got a Ninja LPRV2, another one of these super small regulators that is really nice. And this one, I believe, is like the Polar Star line. It's a little bit different, but it comes with these Polar Star Ninja lines. Oh, I did lie. I had actually one more gear piece. I bought these a little while ago. Shout out to my buddy Chungo. He managed to get me a super good deal on these. Uh, I really love Oakley stuff, so I got some sunglasses that I already have used for a while. And then I got some of these Oakley backpacks. This is like an Oakley sling bag in multicam. This is kind of something I was going to run as like a fast little bag. I forget exactly which this one's called. Um, Extractor Sling Pack 2.0. But these things look super, super cool. Kind of maybe something I'm going to run my SIG MPX with that you guys may or may not seal. No, it's not the Airsoft one. However, I did hear that they announced one of the Airsoft ones, which is going to be awesome. However, this one I think is going to be for one that shoots a little bit bigger round than a 6 milli. Maybe like a 9 milli? Yeah, maybe. And then last but certainly not least is a multi-cam black bag. Wow, this thing is really nice. It's got like the little kind of vented pads in here. Um, this one is the Link Pack um, in multi-cam black. I love Oakley, they just have really high quality stuff and it looks cool, it's something that you can use in like lifestyle, like I could take this to work and it doesn't look too operator, but at the same time, man, you can store so much stuff in here. They have really cool like external molly webbing, you got lots of pouches, you got some molly as well. This one, yeah, I guess both multi-cam and multi-cam block are gonna be like, you're gonna look pretty cool when you're rocking them. But this one maybe will stick out a little bit less maybe, but I like the multi-cam black. Multi-cam black and Cryptic Typhon, mm. Gift to God's green earth. Oh, baby. I am so glad I saved this for where in the video it is. For those of you that stayed around towards this long in the video, you get to see this super, super cool gun. Yo, this thing is so cool. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love this. This is the first one of these I've ever even touched. This is the SIG MPX Virtus. I think it's how you pronounce it. But man, this is, instead of the MPX, it's the MCX. Wow, that stock is amazing. I love that. That's so cool. It's like uh, what I put, ended up putting on my MPX. But even nicer, obviously. Mine's a brace, so I can't. Looks like he's running some sort of little, uh, this is cool. It's like a little sling mount. I don't know if that comes with it. Looks like it's a custom job. He's got the Max Trigger in there, as well as the Polar Star Kythera engine. So this is actually was the first Kythera that I bought, but I had not unboxed it yet because I wanted to show you guys and I wanted to show you my reaction because I'm hoping you guys are thinking the same thing I am. Why did he leave the orange tip on there? Ugh. That's all right, we fixed it. Looks really pretty. I'm gonna put some sort of super sweet, either small suppressor or some sort of like Surefire War Comp style flash hider on there. Looks like he's running a pretty cool, pretty aggressive AFG on this as well. I don't know what brand that is. However, that does feel really, really nice. It's almost like a, kind of like a Strike Industries one is what it looks like. It looks like it's just got a V of some sort. I have not seen that logo before. I don't think it's something that came with the gun, but man, look at those trades too. Even the SIG MPX or MCX trades, you got the Virtus right there. I don't know what this little Vism red dot is on here as well, but man, that thing is sweet. It's almost like a little flip up red dot. It literally, you just hit it. I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but man, that's a cool little thing. I don't know exactly how you turn it on or whatever, but it's a cool little red dot. It's almost like something I would have played with in Modern Warfare 3, one of those. And then it's also got the stock irons on here, which actually feel a little bit cheap, but who cares? You got pretty much everything else. The charging handle on this is really nice too. And then you got a super cool little blue max hop up in there as well as an upgraded barrel bucking. This thing is gorgeous. These silver max triggers are really nice too. You can definitely tell that it's tuned really well. I'm so excited to see this thing shoot. Well, that's how it should look like with an actual flash hider on there. Wow, that is a beautiful, beautiful gun. Look at how small that is too. You can kind of something as you can just fit quick, quick up. If you want to store it in like a bag, man, you could fit that in anything. Bet that fits in that multi-cam black backpack. I might be building one of these next with some sort of fusion engine in it. Seriously, I might do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, last but certainly not least, some of you may be tired of seeing these. Some of you may absolutely love them. If you're one of those people that absolutely loves them, I have bought another Tanaka Car 98. 
Yes, I have a little bit of a problem. Are we gonna talk about it? Absolutely not. I ended up selling my last one to a guy who really, really wanted it. And so I was like, man, I want another one. This one is actually a lot darker wood version. This thing, oh. dude, there is not a single other gun on the planet airsoft wise that looks as cool and as retro as these. I actually attempted to buy a real one. Unfortunately, the stock did come broken. It literally snapped in half right here on the shipping to my FFL, which sucked. So I ended up returning that and I bought another airsoft one. Man, I wanna field these so, so bad. If you guys wanna see me field this as an airsoft sniper somewhere, let me know. They only have 10 rounds in the magazine, but these things shoot so, so, so accurate. It's just an absolute laser beam. Just shoots straighter than pretty much any gun you're ever gonna see. Some of them are pre-band versions. They actually have like 550 feet per second, so you can use a little bit higher gram BB. Obviously, you have your MEDs, or depending on the field or the state or whatever. But in Ohio, at one of the fields, I used one of these, and I couldn't shoot anybody within like 150 feet. But I pulled up first. I was just running up the start, and it was like a really long field. And I came up on this kid, and you just saw his eyes. And I, from about 200 feet away, just shot this, this BB, and it hit him straight in the chest. And he was like, ugh, uh, uh, out. And you could just see the fear in his eyes as soon as this dude looks like I came out of the trenches of World War II running this and way too modern of a chest rig to be using this gun. But I absolutely clapped his cheeks. It was absolutely amazing. One of the coolest airsoft kills I've probably ever, ever had. But man, these things are absolute classics. Tanaka Carne 8. These are really, really expensive. They're very nice. These retailed for like $1,200. I think I actually bought this one for a pretty dang good deal. And I sold my other one. So I was like, ah, I wanted one, especially after the real one broke. All right, guys, that has been the end of this video. It might be something that's two parts. I, you know you guys have been asking for a long video, so I'm gonna try and stick it into one. If you have stayed to the end of this video, comment Merry Christmas, Happy 2020. I love you guys, seriously. I would not be doing this stuff if it weren't for you guys. I know it's been a little bit of a break, but seriously, for those of you who have gotten to the end of this video, I love you guys, I appreciate you guys. Um, you guys are the reason I do this stuff, man, seriously. Like, I would not do this without you guys. I love this. I love the airsoft stuff, but, like, seeing your guys' reactions and your comments and talking with you guys in real life is really the reason why I do this. I love you guys. Merry Christmas. Go celebrate Jesus' birthday. I'll see you guys soon.